Priscilla. Welcome to our in cocktails. I am so excited to chat with you on this beautiful day. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I am always, always open to having a conversation with you, your light, your energy, your positivity, your journey. It inspires me every day. So I'm so blessed that we are able to connect. Me too. I feel the exact same way about you. And I wanted to bring you on the show because you are, I'm just mirroring back what you said. Since we met, you've been such a light and you are such an inspiration to so many different people. And even though you're not directly in the art community, I think we should all gather our forces together and yes. bring together all the amazing humans and all the disciplines. So for those who may not know you, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and just so kind of a <laughs> s- elevator pitch version of your story? Because I know it's quite long. Yes, <laughs> it is. I remember when people were reading my bio, I'm like, I have got to trim this bio because this is ridiculous. But I am Priscilla Frederick Loomis. I am a 2016 Olympic high jumper representing the country of Antigua and Barbuda. I am a three-time Hall of Fame inductee two-time national, um, actually I'm forever national champion so far, (laughs) Um, national record holder. um, And my major was communications with a focus in television and film. And so now I am transitioning out of athletics into more content creation and on air, on camera um, work. I own a nonprofit that supports single parent households, women empowerment, and all the amazing things that we can do for our communities. And I am the CEO and founder of Priscilla Loomis LLC. And that is a motivational speaking business that talks about the Olympic mindset, uh, empowering everyone to live a better life, know their purpose, and wake up every single day knowing what badasses they are. That's me. I love that. What a beautiful summary. Uh, the book is due to come out at some point, right? So I am in the, <laughs> it's funny. I'm, I'm in the process of writing it. And the first line, literally the first line of the book is, I don't want to write this effing book because I want a movie. I just want it to go straight to, to movie. That's what I want. But yes, I'm in the process of writing the book. And it is, I love that I'm writing it now because it's not me looking back. It's me experiencing it. And what I'm going through daily, my mindset, how I'm overcoming different obstacles, how I am dealing with struggles and battles and toxic people and all the things and and the books that I'm reading. So it's very, it's going to be kind of like a diary and looking back of like, holy shit, I've survived this. (laughs) Oh my God. I can't wait to read it. And it's funny. Um, (laughs) And I like that because there's not like, why would you want to write a book about like arriving? Like here's what I've done so far and you're young. So that makes no sense (laughs) because the best (laughs) days are still ahead of you. And there's no reason to. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, that's what what we keep on telling ourselves. I'm like, it's going to get better. The best days are ahead. This is only, and then when I look back, I'm like, that was a really good time in my life. Like (laughs) why was I freaking out? Like one of the lowest points last year of like my career and where I was was when we went to Hampton, when we went to the Hampton. Yeah, same. I, I was like, in- <laughs> <laughs> but looking back, it was so fun. Now it's like, you don't remember those painful moments. And yeah, I kind of want right? to, I do want to dive into your story, but yeah, quick detour. It's so interesting. I think too, because of the nature of the world today is where we like, oh, we're the Hamptons with these amazing people yeah. but behind the scenes. We're going through these deep challenges, growing a business or pivoting a business, or just trying to <laughs> figure out what the F is going on, yes, <laughs> which was literally. me. I was like, what just happened? <laughs> like, what are we like? And that was it. And that was what the, the beautiful part of that is like, when I look back, I don't want to look back and say, I should have cherished that moment just a little bit. And so it's every single time that I'm growing, I'm like, cherish exactly where you are. And when people say it, you don't really understand it, which is why I'm writing this book is because I want people to who understand like at different points of your life, you have to cherish where you are because there's something you're going to get out of it that you are going to cherish it within yourself. And so, yes, in that moment at the, the, when we were at Hamptons Tech Week, I had to sacrifice and I invested probably like, I don't know, 400 bucks that I didn't have. Mm-hmm. I did not have that money, but I had to charge it. And I was like, I need to be in rooms with people that make my soul feel inspired. 
I needed to, I needed to be a, in a room where people who were doing better than me, essentially, or just had a different mindset. I needed to be around people who were going to help me fight on my journey. And that's what that weekend did. And we had a great dinner, right? Like you <laughs> and I had a dinner, I charged it. I was like, I'll deal with this later, right? But it was just being around, especially you. And that's why I want your audience to understand that it is, you never know when you're going to find somebody that is really just going to be a kindred spirit who's going to support you through the good, through the bad, who understands your journey, won't judge you, won't compare, and just is there for you. And that's why I love you. And I think that is why your audience is so wide because it is important that we all connect when you have incredible people and you are one of the leaders on that, on that board. I'm so happy that we had that weekend and I'm similar. I, my business and my, I'm very transparent on this podcast. So I, I shared already how last year was like really hard for me in business. And one of the things that spending that weekend with you, like every logical thing, and I'm sure you can relate to this is like, you should save your money, just stay at home, (laughs) work harder. But like my intuition was like exactly what you said. I need to see the other side. I need to see people who are doing bigger, better things. I need to be in their energy. Even if I am like the shrimp, like tiny thing that like doesn't even like, cause it makes no sense. And, and you know, what's funny when I look back, I don't ever like, yeah, we were in a really freaking fancy beach house. (laughs) I was like, who lives here? (laughs) What do they do? (laughs) Can you adopt me? But what I was like, what I took away that's was my audience. That's exactly what we said at the house. <laughs> I gotta let everybody know this is not a fake. This is not fake. No, I was like, oh, this is like. <laughs> remember, we were going in there, like we need to. You're like, we need to film some content in this house. <laughs> and shout out to whoever's house that was because it was amazing, and everyone Gorgeous. was so welcoming. I wanted to say this. Yes. I don't remember. I don't know if you feel the same way. Like. We were in these rooms and there's some people I'm sure that are like millionaires in there. Cause remember the one lady was like, I need to raise a billion dollars for my foundation. Yes. And yep. I was thinking one, we're playing really small because these people are after way bigger numbers yep. and everyone's journey is different. Some people don't yep. need that kind of funding Two, yep. I never felt less than like, I never felt like people were like, oh, you're not wealthy enough or you're not like, you know, yep. whatever fancy enough. And I just, I couldn't remember- afford one. I couldn't afford one thing in the, in the space. Because it was like a garment shop. And so there was nothing in there that I could afford. There were outfits that I was looking at. I couldn't afford a thousand dollar skirt. There was just no way that that was possible. But you're right. Two million percent. You are, you are hundred percent right. No one one looked at you. Like, in fact, everyone's like, that would look amazing on you. Like, and that was the thing. Even if you don't buy something, you just feel, you feel like you belong there. And I want to thank, shout out to our um, mentor, Jackie, Jax for- Um, she's actually going to be on the podcast this week too. But anyway, yeah. back to your story. I want to say thank yeah. you for being in my life. And also thank you for being like, I think that's a kindred spirit to someone who also sees this, like the future the same way where logic and society, like, like I said, just stay home, shrink, be smaller, save your yeah. money. And yes, saving money is important and being wise with financial decisions is so important, but, and expanding yourself, putting yourselves room with people, which is why this yeah. podcast is such a passion for me. Like I get to bring these conversations to people who might not yet be able to go to such events. So anyway, no, I want to talk about true. your story because that's why I brought <laughs> you on, <laughs> but that was a great detour and it's so relevant. Sorry. So no, I'm glad you brought it up because that's like, that just gave me some good glimmers. <laughs> from the past. Yeah. Um, and well, one day we said, we're going to be on the yacht and we're going to laugh at yes. that time because yes. we're going to, we're going to have these moments. So you are an amazing, multifaceted, talented, <laughs> incredible, like that real beautiful <laughs> person. And you like, you know, when I first met you, your story was that you are a retired Olympic athlete, which yeah. is so cool. And now you are in a whole different field. Now you are taking the yes. gifts and talents that you have beyond that. Can you talk a little bit about first the part where you knew you wanted to become an Olympic athlete? Because, you know, every journey, like a business we start, or even for artists, a new body of work we start. What is that initial spark? How did you know you wanted to be in the Olympics? So I will tell you that was not the goal. That was not the journey. That was not my mindset at all I wanted to be Beyonce that and you can listen to anything any previous interview that I've done I wanted to be Beyonce because growing up I saw these powerhouse badass entertainers 
that's what I want to do. I love to entertain. I love people. I want people to feel amazing when they're around me. I want to have that effect. And so I would watch Selena. I would watch Cher. I would watch, you know, Destiny's Child, but of course, specifically Beyonce, right? And I would watch these women, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, and you're watching and you're like, she's doing it all by herself. She's a badass just by herself. And they were sexy and cool and engaging. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to be. But coming from a single parent household and you have to go to college and you have bills. And when you put the reality spin on it, I realized that I had athletic talent. My mom said, because I wanted to be on Broadway. I wanted to act. I wanted to dance. I wanted to be a triple threat. I wanted to win a Grammy. I wanted to win an Academy Award. That's what I wanted to be. And so my mom said, you can do all of that at any age. You cannot be a pro athlete at any age. So take this time and do it. And so that's what I did. I committed. But my mindset going into it was, I want to be the best. I don't care if the best to, for me, I want to work my ass off. And I want people to know that I'm working my ass off. And I want to be number one at St. John's University, which is where I went and attended college. So I was one of the best athletes in St. John's history. That means something to me. Um, you know, I became a Big East champion. I got to travel, you know, the country. I wanted to win meets. I just, I really wanted to cement my name and give it everything that I could. And I lost my way a few times, but that's what your, you know, college and your, your youth is for. And so in 2012, when I went to the U.S. Olympic trials, I was seated last and came in seventh. So it was 24 out of 24 and I beat people that I shouldn't have beaten. And I realized that my personality, my grit, my work ethic, and my entertainment skills were what got me there, right? Because I wasn't worried about the competition. I was worried about my weave. I was worried about my earrings, my jewelry, my skin, if I was ashy. That's what I cared about. Because I was like, I will do well if I look and feel good. That was it. So when I went, um, you know, placing seventh, having people signing my first autograph, having people line up, wanting to meet me, saying that I entertained them, saying that I was fun to watch. I was like, I can definitely do this. And that kind of set my journey to where I, you know, to getting to the Olympics because the U.S. found no value in me. They did not want to, they found that I wasn't going to be good enough to make the Olympic team or to travel or to compete. And that doubt led me to become an Olympian. Mm. I love that. I thank you for sharing that story. Can you talk a little bit about the balance of wanting to be the best for you? Um, yeah. being, having a competitive spirit and knowing like being hungry for winning. Cause I think even in the arts, like it's okay to be like, I was listening to one of my favorite authors, Ken Follett. He says he was always hungry. He never wanted to just be for some people. He wanted to like mm -hmm. take over the world. And he's like, mm -hmm. But it when coming out of his mouth and like listening to your story, it's not like an egotistical thing. Like I'm the best and everyone else sucks. Can you talk about the difference between an ego driven goal and something deep within you? Like we are describing just wanting to like tap into your full potential. Yeah. So an ego driven goal means it's, it's selfish it, in, the, in the negative context of it's all about me. I only care about me and I'm at the center. That's what an ego-driven goal is. So when you're talking about hunger, and that's what I'm experiencing literally where I am right now filming, it's a hunger for success. But my purpose in life is to uplift others. I want to be an example of positivity, self-love, courage, empowerment, warrior I want to be that's that's what it is to help others mm. we talk about being together at Hampton um, the Hampton Tech Week I pray that I can one day go into rooms and talk to people who were on similar journeys like us and be like let me get a mentor for you here's five thousand dollars because I know you can't afford to be in this room just to just to ease your mind. That's what I got out of that weekend. So when you're talking about this hunger, it's a hunger to be a beacon of light for other people. That's mm -hmm. what it means. So when you're thinking about solely yourself to feed yourself and to only feed your needs, that's, that's egotistical. 
that's not really, that's not, I don't know anything really about that life because that's never been how I've been. <laughs> yeah, I was right? going to say, so, you wouldn't know about it, but it's so important I don't know that about you that say life. this. <laughs> I want, I'm yeah. so happy that you said this because it's so like people get afraid of dreaming bigger and wanting to be their best and wanting to win. Like, you know, it's like, there's really no competition really, especially when you get into business, it's just you yeah. against you. And yeah. the thing is, we're not isolated. When we experience something new or we break a generational cycle, we sh- we paved the way for others. So whether you yeah. are selfish about it or not, doesn't matter. <laughs> You're yeah. still going to create a ripple effect. And I think that's so important for all of us to remember when we start shrinking, when we start getting scared of being bigger and yeah. taking up space. I'm so glad that you brought this up. And, and I so- don't want this to ever, I don't ever want to, like, I want people to understand you have to be selfish. And I think that's the one thing where like selfish and ego, they kind of collide. But for me as an athlete, you have to understand athletes focus on themselves so that we could be our best so that when we arrive we are our best so we do take care of our mental we do cut off toxic people including family members we do have to (laughs) focus on what we're eating what we're ingesting social media what we're putting out there we have to focus on our mental spiritual and physical being because we have to show up correctly on certain days certain times so when people talk about selfish I'm like, what are you being selfish for? What's the end goal? Mm. That's what makes it. So even when you're art, you're allowed to take a step back and say, I need to focus. People respected me when I said, I can't go to this party. I can't go out drinking with you. I can't do this. I can't do this because I'm training for the Olympics. They were like, we get it. But if I say, hey, guys, I am I can't go out because I am building my business. I can't go out because I'm an entrepreneur. I can't go out because I am I have to work on my demo or my reel for my broadcasting dreams. I can't go out because I have an audition. They're like, what? Why not? Why is that? I mean, you know what, though? This is such a powerful thing for all of us to st- like really stand our ground when it comes to this, because mm-hmm. absolutely, it's the same amount of discipline. I mean, not the same. I have never been in the Olympics, but I imagine Stop, that it is. It's, no, it's, it is. It's, it's, brick, it's, it's, it might brick. be even harder. It might brick. even be harder. I will brick tell by you brick, you're building your body and you're, you're strengthening your muscles, gaining speed. Not only that, but you're worrying about like how you're presenting yourself, like all this stuff. Yeah. Same thing with business. And I think or with mm-hmm. art. It's like, we need to normalize, like not, not allowing people to influence our schedules because otherwise like our life belongs to someone else and never us. And then when we look back, like shit, you know, this was a regrettable (laughs) event that I went to that I didn't enjoy anyway. Like, obviously if you enjoy it, if it's people you love, go enjoy yourself. But for most of the time, it's just, you know, this. Yes. It's just noise. And it's like, I would rather be by myself working on my dream because it's going to help others. It's going to help me and I'll be happier. And and then when my dream is built and I have a little bit of space, I can go enjoy whatever the hell I want. Probably won't even want to. (laughs) Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think that's what people forget is like definitely being an Olympic athlete. Again, every, everything that is within you, that sets your soul on fire is going to require sacrifice and it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Life is difficult, right? Like everything that you choose, and I'm reading a book called, uh, um, let me get the actual book so I can give you guys <laughs> the proper title because I'm, I'm the person that's like, um, it's something about something. Um, I'm reading it right now. So Nothing is Missing Ooh, by Nicole Walters. Ooh. Nicole Walters. And her story is absolutely phenomenal. And I think everybody should read it just because she's an absolute powerhouse. But She talks about choose your hard. Life is going to be hard regardless, right? But choose your hard. It's either you're going to choose to stay in, which is sacrificing, you know, going out and doing whatever, or you can stay in choosing your heart and saying, I'm going to learn a new skill, or I'm going to put this time and effort into my business. Choose whichever kind of avenue that you want, but it's going to be hard. You just have to prepare for that, prepare for that. Be ready for whatever decision that you're making. Um, And I think as an athlete, where I take this Olympic mindset into my everyday life is that I had a coach. I had a therapist. I had somebody taking care of my body. I paid for it, right? I took time out of my day to focus on this, right? I spent eight years, eight years training for one day of competition. Eight years to get to one Olympic Games to compete for one day. And so are you able to do that? I'm applying and I'm switching careers 
And now I'm looking at jobs and I'm doing these things. And all I keep getting is no, nope, you're not, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. And every single day I'm like, I'm one no closer to a yes, every single day. So for the artist, I would definitely say that no matter what your journey is, no matter where you are, please know that you have a purpose and you have a value, but that it's going to, it's going to have a lot of ups and downs, but your ups and downs are going to look different. And podcasts like this, you should be ingesting. That's what's most important. <laughs> is that you have a good, you have a good, you have a good balance of people that are surrounding you and filling you up every day and filling your cup up every day. Hundred percent. Can you can we go back to something real quick? And I um, I think this is part one of like a hundred episodes. <laughs> I'm gonna have to bring you back <laughs> next month. So Sorry. my question I is no, no, I love it. That's why I invited you on. I want you to talk. Um, I just have so many other things I want to talk about, and it's a short episode. But my question <laughs> is, okay, let's say you are an Olympic athlete, and like you said, you train for years for one thing, and just like a lot of artists are like painting or working on the stuff, and they might get rejected year after year after year, and they just want that one opportunity. What are some things like behind the scenes, some metaphors we can pull? Like I'm assuming when you're in the gym lifting or running, there's going to yeah. be a lot of failed days, bad, bad training days where you don't reach your goals, where you fall short and it's discouraging, right? Yeah. Where you yeah. get a no for a sponsor, like whatever those yep. things are. And how do you talk yourself through those slow years where you're just grinding away with nothing to show for it, quote unquote, and then like, yeah, you get there. Like, what are some, what are some tips mindset wise to help you see the big picture and not get stuck in the little daily nose? I will a hundred percent. I think people forget also that in the gym we're we're going in knowing that we are going to fail. I go into competitions knowing I'm ending with a failure. I'm a high jumper. So the bar always falls down. It's always ending up. No matter, I can be going for a brand new, you know, personal best. And if I fail, I could have still won the meet, but the bar still ends on a failure. I always, always end on a failure, right? In the gym, if I'm going in, I know that I'm going in not to lift the same thing that I did before, but to add more on or to do it in a certain way. It's to challenge me. It's to get me better. So it is, a, I, I call this Olympic mindset because it is a mind shift. I'm not going into places being like, I am the best all the time. Being an Olympic athlete is saying, I'm going into this preparing to lose, preparing mm -hmm. to fail, but it's making me stronger. That's what's most important. I'm getting 1% better every single day. So when the time comes, I am ready. I am prepared. So the one thing that I correlate now from my Olympic journey to my career, like this, this new career journey is one, I have to continue showing up for myself, continuously show up for you, your goals, your commitment, your passion, your voice, continuously do that. Um, and I, I mean, I journal everything. I journal all the time. It is a part of me. Whenever I hear something, I don't like to keep it just in my phone. I need to be able to see it. Um, and I think there's so many things that we go through and it's okay to, it's okay that you grow because you are going to grow on your journey. So every chapter is going to be a different you. So be okay for that. Be prepared to grow, be, be prepared to be in a new space in a new mindset. It's okay. And as your new life comes, it's going to cost you your old one. Mm. You can't stay in that same space with the same people and the same avenue if they're not growing with you. And some people are in your life, like we always say, for a season, right? For a time, a period, a moment, a season. Um, I would also say that you deserve luxury and that there is D your DNA is made up of excellence. So as much as people try and take your voice away, they try and tell you no, of course, all the time. Know that, I mean, I just read that it took um Dyson 5,000 and like 600 times before making a successful vacuum yeah. 5,000 times of no's 5,000 I got I got like 15 no's and I, I was like <laughs> oh my gosh this is ridiculous so how many times are you willing to be heard and be told no and allowing that to to fuel you because that's what it's about that that's the biggest thing so uh, I mean, build, building your own stability and 
um, you know, realizing that every problem has a solution. Like there's so many things that I go through and that there are mantras that I say that every day that just keep me going because every, every day, as we all know, has a new problem, has a new circumstance. So whatever, wherever you're at, find something that's just going to keep you going. My mantra right now is weather the storm, weather the storm, weather the storm. It won't last. Keep that going. That was my weather last year. <laughs> <laughs> I yes totally so that's so th- those are those are things but um I love you know building my own stability and showing up to feel joy every day and just looking in the mirror knowing that I am exactly where I need to be I have incredible people around me and oh not really succumbing to the negativity because even though I get a no I'm like okay that's one no that they're going to regret one day. <laughs> you know what I mean? hundred percent. A hundred percent. I apologize. Yeah. I no. don't, I never, I never want to compromise my self-worth. And that is something that I have to really stand for myself and stand. And I, again, like, I want to be an example of positivity and self-love and courage. And if I can't go through it, then I can't speak on it. So I have to continuously show up for myself so that I can be there for others. You're doing it. And I, yeah, you're going to get tons of yeses and invites, but I think that is the part that most people aren't willing to, this is this, this messy middle part that we're both in right now is the part that most people don't want to do. Cause it's really yeah. awkward. It's uncomfortable. It's sometimes like cringe and yeah. sometimes it's just embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes what's it's- like devastating and embarrassing. Like it's, <clears throat> you're a hundred percent right. It's all of those things. And that's when people quit. But if we can see beyond people. the emotions then we see the future. We see where we're going. And if, if all this stuff just slides off of us, like, yeah, feel the feelings, go through it, whatever, and then move on because you know, you're not staying move here. On. Yeah. And <laughs> you have to also here. think about, think about the people that are telling you these things are, is it like CEOs of like companies that do exactly what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Or is it people you're just asking guidance for, and they don't see your vision. And sometimes you have to realize that people may not have your vision because you have excelled past them. Exactly. You have a bigger vision. So 100%. you have to understand that like every, every single thing that you see um, that's successful. And I always say like Amazon or, um, you know, any makeup company or anything, it took their own journeys to figure it out. They didn't care about other people's opinion. Nobody thought that I could make the Olympic team. They always would say, I'm too heavy. I'm too fat. You know, I don't have the stability. I don't come from a two-parent household. All of these things. They, they, they were, I was like, I don't really give a shit about what you say about me. My <laughs> journey is, is meant to be higher and greater. I'm going to achieve more. My vision is not your vision. My vision is over here. Let me, I'm going to stay in this, in this scope. And even people who I thought were on the same path as me, sometimes they want you to do worse because they're scared that you'll be in their competition. And that's not the right space to be in, right? Those are not people that I, I mean, I've had high jump competitors who I love and are my best friends. I'm flying out to Spain to see her get married. We were competitors, but we realized the bar was our competition, not each other. Mm. So when you can have that kind of relationship with people, yes, there are people that you might admire and you might be like, oh my God, I wish I could have their business. What if you're meant for greater? Yeah, why catch Don't. yourself there? Be inspired, yeah, use it as fuel, but always just keep digging deeper what you, what yes. you want to create or what you want. Yes. Okay, this conversation will be continued. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. This is amazing. I think this is just a lot for, I think people need to digest this first and then we'll bring yes. it back and talk about the rest of your, your story. Oh, gotcha. But I'm so excited. And okay, tell our list. So if our listeners, maybe there's someone who has a business and wants to bring in speakers, what kind of things are you currently offering? How can people work with you? So everything, if they want to, I always say we can always have a chat. Let's just have a chat. Let's talk. So on PriscillaLumis.com, you can schedule on my Calendly. We can just have a chat really briefly. You can go on my Instagram as well. My Calendly is there. It's Priscilla underscore Frederick. And let's have a chat. I love chatting with people. I love connecting people. And if I'm not right for you, then I will point you in the direction of somebody that might be. Um, I think connection is really important in this day and age as we're all kind of craving it. So let's have a chat, but it's PriscillaLumis.com. 
or on Instagram, Priscilla underscore Frederick. I am on LinkedIn because now I'm a pro and I'm a professional. <laughs> so it's Priscilla Loomis, O-L-Y. Um, and so I, I, right now I'm very much, of course, we're getting into women and uh, women's history month. So I'm speaking heavily on women empowerment and what it, what it looks like to be a leader in 2024 and just believing in yourself and waking up every day. Um, and so that's pretty much what I, that's my biggest thing is women empowerment and making sure that women feel valued, uh, especially, um, in this day and age, there's so many things and so many distractions and so many comparisons. So I speak on leadership development, self-worth, the Olympic mindset. I work with kids. So um, anything and everything, I, I like to say, anything in, in, in the realm of empowerment and self-confidence is really my bread and butter as I've been through sexism, racism, and colorism. So I want to make sure that you know when people wake up, they know that they have a purpose and that they should not be silenced. So I love that. Absolutely. That. Everyone should um, experience your energy at some point. <laughs> I think really so magical. too. But thank you. Even my boyfriend, when we met like briefly for drinks the other day, he's like, she just takes over the room. It's so cool. I'm like, yeah, like your presence. And it's the most, it's like the best gift. And you could take it you anywhere. Are a blessing. You, thank you're going to be in broadcasting, in movies, wherever you want. Yes. Like your energy needs to be wherever you want to be because that's where it's needed. <laughs> thank you so, so much, love. And that's why we are friends. I, I love that you see me for who I am. And, uh, you know, I see you um, for the queen and goddess that you are. So I thank you so, so much for sharing this platform with me and your audience. And you know that I'm always here for you whenever you need. And same here. And for our listeners, I will include your Instagram and your website so people can Thank check you. it out and follow you and get more inspired. Um, super inspired. <laughs> I always Thank love you. seeing your posts. Thank oh, you, Priscilla. Thank we'll you. have you back on again soon. Thank you yeah. so much for being on the show. Bye. Thank you.